This new radio potentially has everything I have ever wanted in a single handset. It is what I believe to be the ideal size and shape, has full size Hall Effect gimbals, all of the buttons and switches I would ever need, as well as the Edge TX operating system as standard. Not only that, it has a 1W Express LRS module built in, as well as an external module bay allowing you to use it with pretty much any other radio system that's available on the market as well. The new Radio Master Boxer literally does pack absolutely everything I have ever asked for into the form factor I have always wanted. In this video, I'm going to walk you through its features and capabilities, and then at the end, I'm going to share with you my thoughts having spent some time with it. Just before we get into it though, I just want to be clear that Radio Master did send me this radio for free, however they have not paid me to make this video, and as always my thoughts are entirely my own. So the Boxer is an all new radio from Radio Master. The model they have sent me here is the Express LRS edition, but it is available in all of the usual suspects as well, that be the 4-in-1 or the CC2500, but the one we're going to be looking at today, as I've said, has that built in 1 watt Express LRS system. Now before we get inside and take a look, and I am going to do an unboxing on this and there is a reason for that which I will show you in a minute, I just want to show you something on the back, and that is this little logo down here which is really important and that is the official Express LRS team logo and that means this radio has been fully tested by the Express LRS dev team it means it's going to have full compatibility and you're going to get the best possible performance. You also have an Edge TX logo here as well, as expected, and again, Radio Master really are doing great work with the open source dev teams to ensure that their products are fully compatible. Now they list all of the specs on the back of the box, but we'll come on to that a little bit more in a minute. Now if we take a look inside, this is where things get quite interesting. I just open that and pull it out. The first thing you will see is that this radio comes with a case as standard. We have our manual, which they've included, some nice stickers, but the radio comes in this nice sort of rigid hard case. It isn't completely hard, you can bend it, but it does offer a massive amount of protection. It's got this nice little rubber coated handle on the top, as well as rubber coated toggles for the zips, and it's very similar to the case that you could buy before for the likes of the Zorro, but Radio Master are including this as standard with the Boxer. Just undoing the zips, you'll then see the second surprise, and that is that Radio Master are including a gimbal protector with the radio as standard. So if I just put it on the side there, you can see that they've included this soft sort of rubbery silicon protector, which not only makes sure the sticks stay nice and protected, but the switches and the knobs and everything else. And again, they really are smashing it out the park with regards to what they are doing with their radios at the moment. Now to get the radio out, we simply undo this little strap and you can see we can lift it out. There's the boxer itself and we'll take a closer look at that in a moment. Then you've got this free area here in the case for, the, for adding batteries or any other accessories. And if we just move to the top of the case here, in this little zip section we will find the antenna and they are including this T-style antenna with the radio as standard. This is the same as we recently saw with the Ranger modules. There is a USB-C cable in here for updating the firmware and connecting it to your computer, as well as a little Allen key and some additional springs. Jumping in and taking a closer look at the radio itself. Now, as I've said, we have this really nice Radio Master gimbal protector included. This simply lifts off the top to reveal the main handset underneath. Now, this radio has pretty much all of the features you would expect to find on a modern radio. We have full-size Vision 4 Hall Effect gimbals as standard. These are the normal metal outer but plastic center Vision 4 gimbals, but it is also fully compatible with the AG01 CNC gimbals as well, if you wanted to do the upgrade later. We have four toggle switches, two control knobs, we then have a switch and a push button on each corner, so we have a latching button on the left and a press and release or momentary button on the right. With regards to these switches, we have the SA and SD, these two external ones are two-way switches, the SB and SC are three position switches, and then we have our S1 and S2 control knobs in the center. We have a power button with an LED, we have our lanyard strap, our 
trim buttons, as well as our mode selection buttons across the bottom here, which are also illuminated too. And then at the bottom, you will find all of the usual control functionality for OpenTH Edge TX. This radio comes with Edge TX as standard, but we have our system, our model, our rotary encoder with button, as well as the return, page forward, back, and telemetry button as well. Flipping the boxer over will reveal one of the other new features on this radio, and that is a nice integrated cloth carry handle. Rather than there be a plastic one that could potentially break, they've got this really nice cloth strap that bolts to the back of the radio, and it just allows you to quickly and easily carry the handset around. Now on the sides, the handles on each corner are covered in rubber, they're not solid plastic and they offer a nice amount of grip. We have our full size module bay, allowing you to use it with the likes of Crossfire and other radio systems. And then at the bottom here we have our battery bay. Now if we open this up, you will find inside a dual 18650 holder. This is what they include as standard with the radio, it doesn't come with batteries, so you are going to need to order them. However, you will notice that they've made the battery bay extra large. And and this allows you to use it with an additional battery if you want to, rather than using it with 18650s. And Radio Master makes something such as this lithium, which is 6,200 milliamp hour, that's going to offer you extended flight time. However, it is worth noting that this isn't included as standard, but it is available to purchase separately. Another thing you may have noticed under the battery is the SD card. They've now located this in the battery bay, just making access to it a little bit easier overall. Just moving around to the top, you again can see our SE button, which is the latching one and the SF momentary. These are flush with the top of the radio and obviously press in when you want to use them. We have a DSC port, a headphones jack and a USB port on the top. This isn't the charging port, this USB is the communication port allowing you to update the internal Edge TX firmware as well as access the SD card and anything else you want to do with regards to firmware. In the middle there's also this little blanking plug. This is actually the antenna port for the built-in Express LRS module and it's very important that you don't power this radio up without the antenna connected. As I've mentioned they do include this T-shape antenna as standard and all you would then simply do is screw that on when you're ready to use it. Just flipping the radio over to the bottom, you will find another USB-C port, and this is the charging port for the battery. This supports the QC3 fast charge protocol, supporting up to 2 amp max, allowing you to charge the battery quicker than you would be able to do on some of the older radios. Now, just before we power the radio up, I just want to talk a bit more about this battery. As I said, when you get the radio, it includes the 18650 holder. However, if you do get this additional battery from Radio Master, it will allow you to use the boxer for up to 20 hours continuously. And as I've already mentioned, you do have that QC3 quick charging as well, which means you're just going to have all of the flight time you're ever going to need from a radio in this handset, but also not have to wait around too long to get it fully charged again with that fast charging capability. Now I've got my antenna connected, it's safe to power on the radio. To do this, we simply press and hold the power button in the center and we get the usual Edge TX sound. Welcome to Edge TX. As well as a power indicator in the middle. We then have our mode selection indication down here and you can see these illuminate as we select each mode. And then we have our Edge TX operating system on the built-in display, again, allowing us to do all of the usual configuration options that you would be able to do with Edge TX. Now, Radio Master are preloading quite a lot of software on their radios these days. If we go into the Lua section, they include the Express LRS Lua as standard, as well as some additional games that are included on the radio, TBS Agent Lite, Wizard Loader, and a couple of other things as well. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this radio has had the once over by the Express LRS dev team. As a result of that, it is fully supported in all of the Express LRS features and capabilities. That's including full gimbal support up to the maximum refresh rate of F1000 and up to that one watt of RF power output. For instance, if we go into the system menu, we can go into the Express LRS configurator. Here you can see that it does have that F1000 selected, which means it's compatible. And if I go into the TX power options, you can see that we have up to one watt of RF power available as well. There is also a built-in fan on the Express LRS module in this radio too, which means you're going to get no problem problems with it moving forward in flight with regards to overheating and you should get the best possible performance that you can get with the module even though it's built in. 
Now, just to give you a bit of a sneak peek inside, I've lifted the back cover. Now, if you were to take the radio apart, just note that there are no wires between the back cover and the main board, so you can simply undo the four screws and lift it off nice and easily. Now, looking around inside, we have our two gimbals either side. As I've said already, these are the V4s full size, and I'm going to be swapping them out for AG01s in the future. That's those lovely CNC gimbals, and if you're interested in seeing that, please do make sure you are subscribed to the channel. We then, along the top, have our two push buttons, which is our momentum entry and latching which are mounted to the main PCB. The PCB sort of goes to the main area down here, up the center and along the top a bit like a T, whereas the main other switches, so the front switches, are not on the PCB which means you can replace them should you accidentally damage them. Just something to note on them as well, the two side ones are two position switches and they do go to two position inputs on the board which means you're probably not going to be able to upgrade them to three position switches in the future. Obviously, in the middle, we have our party piece for this radio, which is that one Watt Express LRS module. We have the antenna connection at the top here coming down on the UFL input. The module with a nice large heat sink, which is going to help with cooling. However, they've also got a fan here as well, which is going to be blowing air up over the module and out the top, ensuring that you get the best possible performance. Then, on the larger section of the PCB down the bottom, we have our real-time clock battery, our battery input, as well as some additional ports here, here and here. We have two LED ports, and there looks to be a Bluetooth port over here, BLE it says, and it's 5V RX, TX and X, which is quite interesting. We'll have to see what that one is. And then, you've got your little vibration motor down here too. Overall, the internal design of the radio looks really nicely done. I see no problems at all. The PCB looks good. We can see it's Boxer version 1.8. That shows you Radio Master really do put a lot of effort into their radios before they even reach the public domain. And it just shows that they've managed to tweak the PCB as much as they can. And hopefully that means we're going to get an absolutely solid radio moving forward. Okay, now one last thing I just want to do is a quick RF power test on the Internal Express LRS module. Now to do this, I'm using my Mission RC power meter. Ignore the display, on mine it's a little bit broke, but the meter itself works absolutely fine. It's the same one I always use on all of my tests. Now, just to be clear, the actual numbers this meter produced should not be deemed as absolute fact. It is a good indication of the power level, but it is not a calibrated tool specifically designed to be giving you factory grade levels of accuracy and as such what you should be looking at is a ballpark area when it comes to the bottom end sort of 5 to 10 milliwatts of difference will probably be okay below 500 milliwatts above 500 milliwatts 50 to maybe even 100 could be accurate it's not absolute fact what it will do though is give us an indication of what's going on so if we just uh move it through to stop it going into standby. We're checking it on 25 milliwatts. We're seeing 21.4, which is absolutely fine. Go to 50. We're getting 47, 48. Go to 100. We're getting 90, 91, which is fine. 250. We're reading about 204, 202. So a little under there. I'd say that's probably under reading slightly on the RF power there. 500. 420, 430 peak, that would be about right, happy with that. And then at the 1000, 896, 905, just hitting the 900s. Again, for a 1 watt module, I think that's absolutely fine. I have tested some 1 watt modules that do give 1 watts of RF output, but I've had tested a couple of others that do come in slightly below. Overall, I think that's exactly the area I would have expected the radio to be in, and it's certainly nothing I'm worried about. Now, looking at the Radio Master range, the Boxer fits right between the TX16 and the TX12. The TX16 has always been Radio Master's large flagship radio, but for me, it's always just been a little bit too big. The TX12 is a fantastic fully featured radio, but it's just a little bit small for my hands. And whilst the Zorro was almost perfect, there was one downside to the Zorro that did make it difficult at times, and that was the battery life. However, we now have the Boxer that really does sit right in the middle. Overall, it's not any larger than the Zorro with regards to its outside shape and size. It just fills the areas where the gaps are around the screen, but it gives a radio with the full-size gimbal capability 
all of the features I'll ever need in a small and portable package. Now, just comparing the Boxer a bit more to the Zorro, because this is the radio it most closely resembles with regards to shape and size. The Zorro weighs 430 grams with the built-in batteries, and the Boxer weighs 725 grams. However, that is with the large Radio Master battery that I was showing you earlier. It is, though, still lighter than the TX16, which comes in at 909 grams, so it very much sits in the middle of the range with regards to weight. With regards to size, though, there really isn't a lot in it between the Zorro and the new Boxer. Whilst it is larger, it is only larger because it fills out these areas at the top. If we actually put them on top of each other there in the footprint, it is only that it is filling out the areas around it, but the overall area of the radio is very much the same. And the reality is, it's not really going to take up any additional space in your bag than the Zorro, in my opinion, but it doesn't have any of the drawbacks of the Zorro with regards to the battery life. And as I've said, if you're going to use it with that large battery, you're going to get potentially 20 hours of flight time from it. Now, just before I share with you my thoughts on this new radio, I just want to summarise what we have here with this handset. The Radio Master Boxer sits very much between the TX16 and the TX12. It is a fully featured handset with multiple switches, controls and functions, yet it comes in a smaller weight and compact size. The Boxer features the STM32 VTG6 processor, which supports one megabytes of RAM. It has a two and a half inch non-touch mono display, V4 gimbal, which you can upgrade to the full CNC AGO1s. It has a built-in module, whether that be Express LRS, 4-in-1 or CC2500, depending on what you want to use. If you go for the Express LRS version, though, you have up to 1 watt or 30 dBm of RF power, and it has a built-in fan to offer additional stability as well. The radio also has a full-size JR external module bay, allowing you to use it with the likes of Crossfire or Ghost, and it has an oversized battery bay, allowing you to use it with larger packs, giving you extended flight time of up to 20 hours, and you have a quick charging capability with the QC3 protocol. Overall, this radio packs everything I have ever wanted into the package I have always loved as well, and Radio Master for me have delivered what I believe to be almost the perfect handset. Now, the final thing to talk about on the Boxer is the pricing. Now, as I've said, it's going to be available in three versions. You have the CC2500, which is the cheapest version at $99. You then have the 4-in-1 or the Express LRS edition, which both cost $139. For that $139, though, you're getting a radio with a built-in module, the Express LRS edition being up to one watt. They include the silicon rubber gimbal protector and the Radio Master carry case as well, and that carry handle on the back. I really do think it is a fantastic package, and for that $140, you're getting everything you need to not only get yourself up and running, but look after your radio as well. Okay, so it's time for me to share with you my thoughts on the new Radio Master Boxer. Now, just to be clear, I am probably quite inherently biased towards this radio. It is nothing to do with Radio Master as a company. It is nothing to do with the fact that they have sent it to me. It is the fact that I have been dreaming about a radio of this form factor with Express LRS, full-size gimbals, and Edge TX built-in as standard. This radio is literally the mythical creature that I have talked about on this channel for nearly two years, and Radio Master have finally delivered. As a result of that, I think it is fantastic. However, I do need to put that to one side and share with you some honest thoughts, as I always do, on what I think Radio Master have done you. With regards to the overall fit and finish, the plastics are okay. They're not the best, they're not the worst. It doesn't have that full sort of rubberized look as the Zorro does, but it doesn't feel as cheap as the TX12. It does have these nice rubberized grips on the side that do add some premium feel to it as well. The switches feel nice and solid. There's no real slop or wobble in them. And the control knobs are actually nice and smooth with no scraping on the knobs themselves and no massive restriction. They are quite stiff to turn. They have a nice solid indent in the middle, but overall, no complaints. The display, two and a half inches, mono non-touch, 
ideal for me, no problems at all. The buttons at the bottom feel nice and solid and the scroll wheel is good as well, doesn't really jump around, quite precise, nice feel to the button too. About the only main complaints that I do have on this radio are as follows. I would rather have had three position switches along the top on the outside edges rather than twos. So if you remember at the start I've said there's two twos and two threes. I'd rather have just had four threes. And the side corner buttons are a little bit rough in the sense of they're not the smoothest in the world. When pressing them down I can feel a little bit of scraping on them and is a little bit on that one as well. The latching feels okay actually, it's not too bad. There's not really much slop in the button but there is a little. However, they just feel a little bit scrapey and rough. That's possibly something that could be helped with a bit of lube and we'll look at that later when I look to do the upgrade on the gimbals to the AG01s. I think Radio Master really have smashed it out of the park with this radio. They have taken exactly what I have always wanted and delivered. But not only that, we have a radio with pretty much all of the features and capabilities people will want in a compact form factor with one watt of Express LRS output. They're including a gimbal protector, you're getting a case in the box as well, and you are really getting an outstanding package here from Radio Master. In recent months and years, Years, they really have been smashing it out the park, not only with the radios and the quality of the radios they've been delivering, but also the support they've been giving to the likes of the Express LRS community, because you're not only buying a radio that's just got an Express LRS module built in, they are making sure their products fully work with the systems that they're integrating, working with the dev teams to get official support as well. And that is one of the main reasons I am more than happy to recommend Radio Master Radio radios on this channel. In the end, I think this is the perfect radio for me. I think this is probably going to be the perfect radio for many, many people. And I think Radio Master have smashed it out of the park. You are probably going to see a lot of people get this radio. And I think it is potentially almost, maybe is, the perfect radio you can buy today. Now, if you're interested in getting yourself a Boxer, there is a link to it in the description of this video. As I said, the Boxer is available from Radio Master for about $140 for the Express LRS edition. And if you do use the link in the description, I will receive a small commission. Radio Master is the only company that I use affiliate links for on this channel. And that is because they are such a trusted brand. And if you'd like to help support us, please do consider checking it out. Now, if you have found this video interesting, please do let me know what you think in the comment section. If you have any questions, put them in there and I will try and answer them as well. Now, if you'd like to support the channel, there are links to Patreon in the description. If you would like to support us like many other people do, please do consider checking it out. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not be able to keep making content on this channel without their support. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.